Welcome back, everybody, and welcome to the next session on Enterprise Knowledge Graph in Action at LGT. Uh, my name is Tony Shaw. We met uh, in the introduction, so uh, pleasure to have you back. Uh, a couple of things before we get going. Uh, everybody in the session, uh, except for the speakers, of course, are muted, but you can leave questions in the Q&A section on the right-hand side. And uh, we've agreed with the speakers that we'll handle most of the questions at the very end, so um, please be patient for that. Uh, they have allowed specific time to answer questions at the end. Uh, if you're finding that you need to enlarge the screen at all, there's an icon on the bottom right of the uh, the uh, screen image, uh, which will enlarge it uh, quite significantly. So take advantage of that. All right. So let's get started. Uh, our two speakers today are Raya Wenk, the head of data analytics and information management at LTT, and Jacoba Skilluk, the CEO of Agnos.ai. Uh, I'm pleased that we were able to squeeze this case study in. Uh, late in the planning process because it is a significant story and I'm grateful for both of them for, to, for bringing it to us. So, Rhea and Jacobus, please take over. All right, thank, thank you. you. Rhea, you uh, kick off. Okay, then I um, appreciate you being here. Um, we will talk in the next 30 minutes about the Enterprise Knowledge Graph in action at LGT. We will go through shortly an intro, so just to set the scene, and then we deep dive into what did we deliver in this EKG project together with Agnes AI. I, um, we will show you how we built the EKG up at LGT and then do some deep dives on the key topics going to, through the success factors for the EKG implementation. And last but not least, we want to give you a, a bit of insights what we learned on this journey. All right. Just, Go I ahead. will start. Um, as Tony said, I am the head of data analytics and information management at LGT. In this role, I am responsible for the group by data management and analytics practices at LGT. This is covering defining the vision, the strategy, the roadmap, um, building up the architecture, infrastructure, and also the delivery of DMA data management and analytics services and products. And in this role, I can count on a lot of committed and skilled team members who are um, delivering their products and solution. Before I had the opportunity to get in this role, I was in the Institute for Information Science and did their research projects, um, mainly focusing on semantic technologies. I hand over to you, Jacobus. All right. Um, I am Jacobus Gulluk. Uh, that's a Dutch name. Um, I worked uh, since 2010 on semantic technologies, uh, working for companies like uh, JP Morgan Chase and Bloomberg and uh, BNY Mellon, where I uh, worked on semantic technology projects. Uh, uh, we started to call it Enterprise Knowledge Graph at some point in 2015. and. Uh, uh, got uh, a large uh, EKG, as we call it now, in production uh, in 2016. It's still running in production, serving regulatory purposes and other, many other use cases. Um, and after doing it as, uh, a, few, a few times, I thought, uh, let's start a company doing this uh, and, and focusing on just this, uh, this uh, particular topic uh, in 2018. And uh, we started talking to LGT and worked uh, for LTT uh, ever since. All right, um, Ria, what is LTT? Thanks, um, I just want to introduce LGT so that you get a bit of an understanding in which environment we build up the EKG. LGT is the world's largest private banking and asset management group owned by a single family, the Princely House of Liechtenstein. We are delivering sophisticated private banking and asset management solution covering traditional private banking services, wealth planning, 
lending and financing, alternative investing, and even investing with impact. As you can see, um, LGT is present in more than 20 locations all over the world. And um, we have about 240 billion um, in assets under management and around 3,800 employees at the time. Oops. Oh. <laughs> Um, I pressed the wrong button. Oh, I am so sorry. Um, this is um, just um, reshare your application window, and then we'll post it again. This, I, I clicked on the wrong Chrome tab. Sorry for that. <laughs> okay. <laughs> it's all right. Um, coming up, uh, loading, and uh, now needs to share this again. Share screen, Chrome tab, and there we go. Apologies for that. You're back right. up. Perfect. So um, we want to show you a bit what were the key achievements of this EK LTT project or initiative we started. Um, there are mainly six main deliverables we um, developed during, I would say, one and a half year. Um, important is one deliverable, the EKG strategy and architecture. That's one of the key topics we will also talk about later on. Um, we developed an EKG strategy, which was strongly aligned um, with our business strategy. And um, I think I can hand over to you, Jacobus, to explain a bit the extensible EKG platform. Yes, uh, yeah. What is an EKG in the first place, right? Uh, that's uh, that's our name for uh, uh, yeah, enterprise knowledge graph, obviously. But it's 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 a knowledge graph at enterprise scale. It's designed from the ground up to support uh, infinite scalability, uh, allowing you to build a digital twin, basically, or multiple digital twins. So you will for uh, creating a model of the real world, getting all the data in your space, uh, that could be the whole bank or even in, or beyond the bank, uh, getting all your data sources onboarded, linking all the data together without necessarily putting all your data in one database. Uh, the data could stay in place or it could be moved to special types of databases, graph databases, for example, triple stores, semant semantic graph databases. At LGT, we're using uh, Stardog for that. Um, and uh, you, you, it, we are not saying that we would like to have all your data in one in one database. And we are also supporting uh, the principles, the 10 principles of the Enterprise Knowledge Graph Foundation, which basically set out these are the 10 things that you need to have in place in order to, to create an EKG. And uh, uh, we'll talk a little bit more about that. But one very important concept is uh, the ability to support open world basically support all the most granular data uh, of all the various sources next to each other uh, and, and present it all together link it all together so the exactly and based yes go ahead sir, really. based on this uh, extensible ekg platform we'll build up our ekg lighthouse project so the first project we did in lgt based on this platform um, which Jacob was, was talking about. The EKG Lighthouse project was quite a special one. Um, we developed a legal entity management solution and we replaced the existing solution by doing so. Um, we tried to find a use case uh, with, with, which uh, has high reuse potential so that we also show what are the benefits of an EKG for the entire company and not only for a specific use case. And we're trying to find a project which is from the complexity side not too complex so that we can deliver it all fast, but still that it has enough complexity to show, as I said, the different um, benefits it has within the data management and analytics platform. Exactly. And uh, next to that, we also uh, delivered basically the first uh, uh, yeah, cloud-based development practice. Uh, like uh, the, the cloud came basically at the same time as when we started. So 
Uh, this is kind of the, 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 yeah, a new complex Kubernetes-based, uh, OpenShift-based uh, uh, deployment, uh, many different services and environments um, running uh, at the same time. Uh, it's all infrastructure as code, uh, DevOps. Uh, uh, we're using a, a team, uh, let's say an international team that uses GitHub and Slack, uh, etc. Uh, and that works very nicely now uh, with an internal team where so basically our test and dev environments are in uh, in the cloud and uh, and we, we we work together in a way that yeah, that that works well actually and which is kind of a, a a nice model to scale up resources as well for 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 LGT. Exactly and. and yeah, also, um, <laughs> yeah, we are jumping further and back. We um, developed a method for DMA projects, which are based on uh, enterprise knowledge graph. Just uh, it's a standards based, so we didn't invent the wheel. Um, we just took what is there and tried to um, implement it within LGT. Um, it is really covering end to end from how can you analyze the strategy to really implementing um, the use cases on our infrastructure. And it's um, also aligned with the EKG method from and the maturity model, um, which Jacobus talked about earlier. I think that's quite an important deliverable as well, because it is different to build up EKG projects within a company. And therefore, it's required that everyone in this project knows what to do and how to do it. Yeah, so so we have a team of people where some of them have worked in, in multiple EKG projects already. Uh, so there's a lot of experience, many years of experience now that we kind of capturing now in what we call the method, the EKG method, and we are working with the foundation to make that a, a standard, an open or public standard. Uh, but part of that method is the maturity model, which is kind of a, a, a structured way of uh, translating vision and, uh, and into strategy and creating uh, all the cap basically addressing all the capabilities that are affected by uh, by EKG um, and that it's it's a structure where we basically say we have four capability domains uh, business uh, to start with then data then technology and then the rest of the organization um, so that's the four pillars as we call it uh, usually uh, not capability domains but th that's what they are uh, we try to address basically those four different audiences uh, in their own language as well. Um, and then we have five maturity levels. Uh, so you start at level one uh, with a uh, one use case, for example, and then the platform level and the enterprise level. Um, and if you want to know more about the maturity model, then please, uh, yeah, please join the Enterprise Knowledge Graph Foundation, I would say, where we are working this out and capturing this all in, uh, in, in the method. Exactly. And there's a second deliverable we achieved within our EKG project is the center of excellence or center of competence, doesn't matter how we call it. Um, for us, it was important that we have um, really in-house capabilities around the EKG, um, but still we have a balanced sourcing model, which means we are also relying heavily on Agnos AI and their expertise. I think it's quite important where you will never have as a company from scratch on all the capabilities you need to build up an EKG, which is um, really a basis to use it for the entire company. Um, we have also evolved the EKG capabilities within LGT through trainings and um, further developments. And um, I think that's that's something we have learned and we will go through it also later on, that a, a balanced approach between having in-house capabilities and really a strategic partnership is um, crucial to be able to deliver fast and, and to plan also ahead the roadmaps, how we will um, expand the use cases is best, um, based on the extensible EKG platform we built up at LGT. And as you can see, I mean, these are six very different um, deliverables from, from strategy, from method over actually really delivering added value through our first um, Lighthouse project and having then this, this platform which we can use further on for DMA activities within LGT. I think 
now that you have um, seen what we did within, I would say, uh, one in, in maybe a year and three months, one and a half year, um, I want to show you a bit how we started just going through it, where we started, what we did, so that you can um, understand a bit the journey. And as you can see, it was um, already started in 2017 um, within LGT. We did an analysis of our business and IT strategy to understand what are the strategic objectives and how can we support that from our department. Um, we also performed two POCs, two proof of concepts. One was in the field of artificial intelligence. We called it back then cognitive computing. And one POC was a POC around EKG, which was basically um, the groundwork for then really delivering the, the Lighthouse um, project, the, the legal entity management solution. And in parallel, we did also a readiness assessment for data management and analytics covering also the um, EKG because in my opinion it is quite important for companies to understand that it's not about um, artificial intelligence or new technologies it's often really also um, about the, the culture and the way of working and the methods and the strategy um, within a company and therefore I wanted to show in parallel of the POCs on which level um, LGT has to do their work to really improve by using data and analytics. And based on this readiness assessment and the POC did back then, we got the mandate um, from, from the senior management, the C-level management, to build up a holistic and strategically aligned data management and analytics program within LGT, which is as you can see, really based um, upon the EKG. And it's covering the governance part, it's covering the data factory. The data factory is our platform we build up where the EKG is, is a core capability within. And as you can see, we have four different service groups. So we don't only deliver the EKG for analytics, we use it also for data management and information management. Um, functionalities and for business intelligence, so reporting and dashboarding solution, as well as for use cases um, in the field of advanced analytics and artificial intelligence. Um, when we have defined the, the vision, the mission and, and this approach, how we will institutionalize data management and analytics and the EKG within LGT, uh, we looked out for, for partners who have the knowledge and, and experience to build up such a platform um, within a company. And we reached out to Agnos AI and then the, the hard work started <laughs> because um, doing a POC is quite easy. I mean, it's, it's, it's a, a narrow scope, but really implementing a platform and bringing in um, this change of, of working and, and also this uh, strategic um, view on, on data management and analytics is quite a, a lot of work to do and we are still um, doing it to be honest. It's a journey. It's not a, something you can do one off and then it's all good. Um, and uh, together with uh, Agnes AI, um, we had the EKG vision alignment. So we really put the EKG in the center of the DMA strategy. We performed, as I said before, this Lighthouse project um, and followed this balance sourcing strategy um, we talked about before. And based on that, we are now working on a roadmap. So how can we leverage the potential we have based on the EKG platform? Maybe we can go to the next slide, Jacobus. All right. Thanks. We have um, chosen two main key topics we want to really go through thoroughly um, in this meeting. Um, on one hand, the, the vision and business strategies, and on the other hand, the Lighthouse project or how we choose the, the project um, to start the EKG initiative. I will shortly go through the business strategy. In my opinion, and I'm pretty sure Jacobus <laughs> um, is uh, think it as well. It, the business strategy, so as DMA or EKG responsible person, you really have to understand um, the business strategy. What what are, is LGT focusing on, on? What are the strategic objectives? Um, what do we, we want to reach by building up an 
KG within a company. And for us as LGT, it's clear we want to stay competitive also in the digital um, age. We still want to provide comprehensive and client-focused private banking services and um, want to provide an outstanding expertise and service quality. So this means for us um, who are building up an EKG is uh, supporting um, technology for the entire data management and analytics services that we need to be flexible and still reliable in what we are doing. Um, business also stated out that we have to increase the agility so um, that we can react fast on the changing environment we have from business side, but also from a risk and regulatory perspective. And as you have seen in the introduction of LGT, um, ethics and, and, and uh, data privacy and security is a hot topic in, in private banking and in LGT speci specifically. So the solutions we are building up um, based on the EKG, they have to be also reliable and they have to follow all the regulatory requirements we have in financial services. A point I think everyone from you <laughs> hears it every day, um, we have also to, to decrease, and I would say drastically decrease the time to market for our DMA solutions um, that we can, when there are upcoming new ideas from business sites or pain points that we really can address them fast and that we still can doing it but uh, still can be flexible and also offering really specific services, especially in private banking. Maybe that's in retail banking a bit another thing, but in private banking, it's important that we are client focused and that we can deliver um, tailor-made services based on the EKG. And um, the first point I think is something, um, it's good that business really point, pointing it out. Um, they saw that we have, a bit of lack of an understanding of the data we have. So this 360 um, view on clients or on assets or on processes or services um, is quite hard to reach if you have so many legacy systems. And therefore, this is also one of the main points we had to um, address by building up the EKG. Maybe Jacobus, you want to add something? Yeah, yeah, well, especially that yeah, that 360 degree views at that that goes by many different names. You can also call it the holistic view uh, or uh, uh, anything 360. Uh, there's all kinds of names for this, but basically it means like, like if you present a user interface to an end user that is kind of very tailored, very bespoke for that end user, then we would like to offer the, the ability for that end user to click on anything uh, and, and dig deeper basically and find information that you've never seen before or you, like the, that you can click around that you can discover data basically um, that you can see the full picture uh, and get a better understanding of uh, why do I even see this data why do we have uh, how does it relate to other data and information so that we can eventually offer better services to customers and with more understanding of the customer uh, let me switch to the next one. Uh, so the data strategy, um, for uh, like I just said, is the holistic view basically again, making a data centric approach. Data is a primary asset, maybe the primary asset. Um, uh, and uh, I think yet, yeah, uh, Ria, you would probably want to say something about this. Uh, like technology follows the data, and not the other way around. Exactly. That's a discussion we always have within IT because um, our department is actually um, in the IT. I'm reporting to, to the CIO directly. And normally you have the business strategy and then follows the IT strategy and maybe then follows the data strategy. And that's, in my opinion, one of the paradigm changes we all we really need to do. Um, that first is the business need and the business strategy. And then we have to align the data strategy and the technology follows to support the business and data strategy. But this is really a change which um, is hard to do, to be honest, and will also take time, I would say years, to really get this mindset into the C-level, but also in each and everyone who is working within LGT, um, from business side as well as from IT side. Yes, and we do it at all levels. Huh? That is, this, is, this is very helicopter level, but when you zoom in on one use case, then it still is that order. Like business owns the use case, defines what the use cases is. We try to create a so-called use case tree, which is part of the method. Uh, more, a little bit more about that later. 
basically plotting out all the various use cases uh, that the business uh, wants us to deliver. Um, and for each and every use case, we get first business needs and then translate it to data strategy, to, to, to data requirements and linking it to things like ontologies and data sets, etc. Um, and then eventually we worry about the technology. The technology is the least of our problems, basically. It's uh, the technology works and we can fix everything, uh, but it's it's like a, getting things aligned: business needs, data, then technology, and then the rest. Um, and and also like it, it's about much higher levels of quality uh, oh, across the board, especially data quality. Uh, aim much higher. There's so much we can do. So much more. Like all the data at the moment is is in silos. It's uh, it's biased. It's, it's designed for one purpose. Um, whereas in a in a digital twin and in an EKG, uh, the data that you present in the EK, in the EKG is kind of by definition is not biased. Is 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 not designed for just one use case. It's it's mapped to all kinds of ontologies. Uh, could be conflicting ontology, de dealing with multiple versions of truth at all levels. Uh, uh, for example, for one particular uh, jurisdiction, you might have this terminology. Uh, the, you could have a regulator that calls a critical business function uh, something else, like it could be a critical operation, for example. Uh, the, in the UK, it, they call it critical business function, I believe, and in the US, they call it critical operation. Uh, same thing. Uh, but you have to deal with all these different models, different, uh, it's not just different terms, but slightly different ways of looking at the world. And in an, in an EKG, your data has to be so fine grained and, and so normalized in that sense that you can deal with all these different models. Then uh, next to that, it's not just working with dumb data, uh, but data, we want data with a machine readable definition. Uh, so that you and, and link to knowledge that you capture in ontologies, which is basically your machine readable knowledge, uh, link to all the types of metadata that you have. That's not just the, the description of the term, but there's much more to this: the provenance and the and the uh, lineage, and, uh, who owns it, and uh, what systems created it and uh, aggregated it. Uh, what are the the, let's say the retention policies, the caching policies, the pricing policies, uh, uh, you name it. There are tons of different types of metadata that we all want to bring together. Then on top of that, we want to also know what's being done with that, met met that, with that data, which is hey, what are the use cases? How is it used? Uh, who is using it? Uh, all of that comes together in one place. Right? And that's, that is your data strategy, basically. And we link it together by having this core artifact that we call the use case tree, which is a, an artifact that everyone can talk to in all those four pillars. Uh, the business people, they know, okay, this is the use case that we got, that we are working on. Uh, the data people know it, uh, what, what it means. And of course, they have all kinds of translations to their own world and their own lingo. Uh, but the core artifact that we have from, from start to finish, all the way to production and, and beyond, um, is that use case tree? Um, so and let's let me switch to the uh, to the oh yeah. So one important point I forgot here is the open world uh, story. So how can you build a, a digital twin of your whole world if there is only one single version of the truth? Like that's not a digital twin. That is the censored version of the digital uh, of the of the world maybe. But the real world is there is always multiple versions of anything. Um, so what we like we, we are doing we are changing that that's unique the unique feature let's say of what a real ekg is is that you embrace reality uh, that you inst institutionalize the paradigm of open world that you basically get all versions of the truth next to each other presented and then let's say per use case you uh, you come up with the right version of the truth for that particular context everything is about context um, then next to that, we have the uh, enable the discovery already mentioned that uh, in the previous slide. So let's not do it now. And uh, let me switch, flip to the next one. The technology that uh, translate all of that to the technology strategy. Well, if, if you want to have one platform that runs all your data, ultimately, then you have to do that in the cloud. So let's not talk too much about that. That's an, that's an obvious one, I would say. Um, so you could call that EKG platform uh, a data fabric or a semantic data fabric or a digital twin. It's kind of all the same. 
Um, and uh, what, what basically happens is because you have one platform that serves all these different use cases, all these different uh, product owners and users with, and they all have different agendas and they're all important, of course. Um, so you cannot work with, it's just impossible to do that with uh, a standard uh, waterfall method, like where you, you cannot freeze, you cannot have a code freeze anymore. You cannot, it doesn't work like that. So it's like, it's, we have to basically do the same model as Netflix and Facebook and Google and Airbnb uh, are using. Those systems are never going down. Um, and they gradually change the system in very small increments, uh, which you could call continuous deployment, uh, which is a key, a key feature that you have and in, a, in a bank, in any large bank, a large organization, uh, and even smaller ones like LGT, uh, continuous deployment is a very hard thing uh, to 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 get to get working. It's uh, because there's so there's all kinds of checks and controls and tests uh, and user acceptance test procedures, etc. And all of that needs to be looked at um, if you want to go to continuous deployment. So that that's a big thing to think about. And last but not least, like reuse is the number one priority in all its aspects. And, the, and in many projects, reuse is never on the agenda even. Um, let, let alone a priority, but uh, whatever you do in EKG, uh, everything we build is built for reuse and for reusability. If it's not, if it's not reusable, then don't do it, basically. Yeah, exactly. I Maybe I can jump in here because that's that's really important, as you have seen now also on the slide, how we approach um, the data management and analytics part within LGT. You have seen that we have to deliver for various um, service groups from data management over BI to advanced analytics. And if you don't um, have this view on what component can I reuse, um, it's quite hard, especially with such a small team we had in the beginning, um, to really build something up, which then can be um, scaled up. And that's also the last point we have here from an architectural point of view. I think reusability can only be supported if also the architecture behind it is, is built like that. And um, in our, so within LGT, we have an own architecture department, still the data architecture role is when, within my department. And this is so critical. If you don't focus on, on the reusability, you're just building up new silos. And um, therefore, it's important that you have this alignment from, from the strategy, um, uh, from a data-driven architecture to really delivering the, the single use cases, but still based on a, on, on a principle of, of the reusability. All right. Well, we have eight more minutes for our part. So let's... Uh... There's a little bit Jump to uh, the... faster, but uh, yeah, like strong leadership, uh, skin in the game. Um, uh, like Ria, I think you can maybe talk to this better than I do. Okay. Yeah. yeah, the strong leadership. I think it's important that you have someone who is really um, seeing the benefit of what we are doing and, and, and really uh, leads the entire discussion because it's quite a lot about stakeholder management. So um, as Jacobo said, it's really you have to have someone who has the skin in the game and everyone in the team has to, to del deliver as well. Um, and this is quite important to communicate always the vision, the strategy. Why are you de doing these things? What is the benefit of it? Um, so that you really create the buy-in also from business side as well as from um, management side. And um, as we already have said, the strong collaboration, I think that's what, that's also um, a key from organizational perspective that you know which capabilities do you need in-house and you want to build it up, um, which capabilities you need from externals and have a good mix between externals and internals um, just to be able to to deliver all these um, components and this project. So for us uh, as LGT, it was clear from the beginning, we will have an ecosystem together with external partners like Agnos AI, but we want to have for the entire EKG at the end of a journey, um, all the capabilities needed within LGT. Good. Um, Let's jump from the discussion about the, the vision and strategy alignment, which is quite a core topic um, if you are building up EKG in a company. 
um, we just want to give you some insights how we choose our lighthouse project. So the one um, project which should be um, giving us a bit more of support also from, from uh, management level. So for us, it was uh, important to have a project which adds really um, value to the business. So um, there must be a clear pain or need from business side which you can solve by applying EKG um, within such a process. It's also important that you can show that it's not only for this use case. So the problems you are addressing within this first project you're doing based on an EKG should also have um, actual problems which are common in a, in a company so that you can show um, that it's uh, EKG, not only a silo solution, but really something you can address so many different use cases is, um, within a company. Yes, and, and yeah, we, we also uh, we started with basically a, a three day workshop uh, where we uh, discussed uh, what is EKG, what are the business benefits, how does it affect uh, the business, etc. But also what we call discovery and like the this basically think broad, think big. Uh, what are the long term uh, use cases that you uh, would like to implement, and then drill it down to a particular set of use cases that uh, that that have a high reuse potential and would and basically create a roadmap, like a shortest pathway to that high level roadmap uh, use case at the top of your use case tree that you would like to uh, implement. Uh, so in this case, it's it, it's all about basically the core of, of the bank, all the uh, the reference data. Uh, start with legal entities, let's say, and contracts, and and, and all the various uh, reference data elements around it. Um, and uh, I think spending some time in, in thinking thinking broader uh, and thinking about put high reuse potential is is, is very important. All right, let me switch to the next uh, slide because we have only a few minutes left. All right. Really. Exactly. So we already talked a lot about that. What are the success factors in building up an EKG? Um, we split it up in the pillars uh, Jacobus mentioned before from the EKG maturity model. Um, regarding the business pillar, I think without C-level management support, you cannot really be successful because it takes time. Um, it is an innovation project, so not everything will go in the right direction. So you may have some setbacks and some learning curves you have to go through. So it is really crucial to have someone in the C-level who is supporting and understanding what you are doing. So having really this clear mandate, but also the, the leeway. Um, and um, as we already mentioned in the beginning, having this shared vision, what you want to reach with an EKG within within a company and what value is um, something we may miss also during the entire project to pronounce from, from uh, time to time. And um, last but not least, having an understanding what is the scope of the first project is, is for sure helpful if you don't have a too broad scope and you cannot really deliver in time. I think that's also important that you have there the support from the business owner. So our business owner of the EKG solution we built up with the Lighthouse project, he was really passionate and supported our um, initiative. I think that's quite a, a crucial factor in being successful in delivering EKG projects. Yes, uh, yeah, I can only uh, uh, agree with this. With this, of course, uh, like the the C level support is for me the critical one uh, because I've done now multiple projects, and the ones that are were successful were the ones that had C level support. Um, if you don't have that, if then basically almost don't don't even start. They don't. If management only wants to do a POC, that's kind of uh, low risk, uh, no skin in the game uh, POC Barbie. Where we basically introduce uh, at least ten different paradigms in one project, doing basically everything in a different way than what people are used to, uh, then the pushback that you get in a in a in a, a large organization is just too much. It's too too, too much to cope with, um, and getting it in production is 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 almost impossible. Like you have to have uh, top level support. You cannot do this bottom up. Uh, that would be basically my, if you remember. One thing about this presentation, that's what I would say, that's the, that's the takeaway. 
Um, and uh, it, it's about mandate and leeway, uh, and everything else derives from that, basically. Um, let's uh, go to the next one, because we're almost um, yeah. Exactly. As I said before, um, I think in the beginning we were communicating in the company quite a lot of what we are doing. Um, we get you know, got some insights to the different stakeholders, but during the project we may lost a bit track because we were focusing so um, on the delivery that it, we didn't have time to always explain what we are doing and always give to the, the various stakeholders we had the insight they needed. So I think that's something we would or should do better um, next time that we really over and over again repeat what is the benefit, what are we doing, um, how can it evolve um, in, in LGT's um, portfolio. So I think there uh, we may lost a bit track over the, over the project. Um, what we saw also saw and the point we mentioned before is the architecture. So we had quite a lot of discussion around design principles and architecture principles when building up the platform um, and, and the use case. So also there, I think um, that was mainly because we didn't have a, a strong architecture um, when we when we started. Um, I also think that the distinction between the efforts we, we have to build up the EKG and the efforts we have to build up just this um, Lighthouse project, that's something we may miss a bit. So we uh, financed everything, the EKG platform and the Lighthouse project through a business project. And this also put a bit of pressure to be able to deliver. Um, so I think there we will improve the next time um, that we also be a bit more transparent about what is an EKG platform effort and what is really the effort just for the use case we have built up. So, yeah. Jacobus um, and Ray, we have quite a few questions. Um, would you be willing to switch over and, ah, look at that. Right on time. <laughs> yes. All right. Almost so, on time. Um, <laughs> Uh, a question that's been asked um, in a couple of different forms is, uh, can you share what a typical business problem example would be that the EKG will address effectively? Well, at the, at the moment, we, what we delivered at the moment is, is uh, uh, legal entity management, uh, like I said, all the, the whole workflow uh, around uh, creating new legal entities for, for example, a fund. Uh, you create a new legal entity that is owned by multiple parties and you have all the various uh, details and uh, differences in jurisdictions and uh, 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 directorships, uh, ownership, uh, control structure, uh, like all the various details need to be uh, approved, etc. We have auditors and accountants involved. Uh, so there's a, there's a workflow around it with lots of details. So getting that data uh, to, to be correct and precise and high quality uh, that is in this case uh, what the use case is but but you could you could uh, extrapolate that to to many other use cases like in any given organization especially in the bank uh, all all that all that master data reference data needs to be needs to be of high quality and uh, i would say we can we can um, uh, we actually replace the system in this case, but I'm not saying that EKG is there to replace your current systems, but you can see it as a layer on top of all your other systems, uh, providing a holistic view uh, and, and, and figuring out what is the right data without doing that in ETL and in five page SQL statements anymore, but uh, <coughs> do that in the context of a graph and creating this high precision, high quality uh, layer of data that can then serve many higher level use cases like risk management and uh, su uh, supply chain management, like there's, there's all kinds of high level use cases, which we call the enterprise, a strategic enterprise level use cases that can then be built. And that's, uh, I, I, we have this bonus slide, uh, the what, what next is basically, that's what we're trying to do in the next, for the next series of use cases, showing that we can decrease the time to market, that we can, uh, deliver much faster and faster because we reuse lots of underlying use cases. And so everything we built so far is 100% reusable 
and completely model driven. Uh, there's no single line of code for this single for this first use case. Okay, so uh, I'm gonna I'm gonna extend that question a little bit because there's a specific question here from Kristen who asks, would the the um, knowledge group replace the entire warehousing or data <laughs> aggregation strategy? Tricky question. <laughs> um, Very long term. Let's say, yeah. yeah, exactly, exactly. I mean, let's say from a recent perspective, yes, it could and should go there. Um, the time to do that is, uh, I think we are talking about years. And that's actually also why we had in our platform, not only the EKT, but also traditional um, let's say data warehousing, data analytics technologies, um, because putting everything just on the EKG would be way too much. But over the time, I think it's it's going in this direction for sure. Okay. Um, our friend Mike Bennett is curious, uh, how do you ensure that semantics, the semantics or meaning is owned by the business rather than the data side? Uh, I'm very good um, to see that. Mike is on the call, Mr. Fibo. Um, <laughs> um, can I can I take this one over here? This, this, yeah, of course, of course. Um, um, so, uh, what we are trying to do here is not uh, presenting ontologies to business people. Uh, I've, uh, I've, I I don't believe that that works. Uh, so we. We came up with this uh, that new methodology uh, that's around the use case tree, yeah, the use case tree concept, where we define uh, what the business outcomes are for each use case, um, and eventually also high level user stories. And like for each user story, let's say feature or requirement, I said as a persona, I want this feature in order to achieve this business outcome. That is the kind of language that we can. Uh, get agreement with with the business without talking uh, basically stripping all discussions about uh, systems and, and and screen designs and database schemas or ontologies uh, let's not talk about that just tell me in plain English what do you want uh, what do you want us to, to deliver to you uh, that's uh, and that's what the use case tree is all about and then don't go, walk away and translate that to some other model uh, that no one recognizes anymore but keep that use case tree alive and intact. Just add more information to it, which we did. And by adding all that information, eventually, that is your use case. That is the program. There is no coding. There's, you just add more information about what is these user stories? How does it work? Uh, what kind of data are we combining uh, from which data sets, et cetera? That is the program. So that, that's what I mean with a no code uh, use case. There is, there is no code. Uh, it's all model driven. So your use case tree, eventually, it's like a Christmas tree. You hang more and uh, more uh, stuff in your in your Christmas tree, and eventually, it runs in production. And maybe I can add there a bit, uh, let's say, more from an organizational perspective, because actually, I am when I'm talking about data, I think it's important to see that it's more a, a, a business topic than it is a classical IT topic, and. We are quite happy to have subject matter experts from business who are heavily involved um, in this kind of data steward community. And because they have issues uh, with low data quality, they are also contributing a bit in, in understanding better what, are, what is the data within all the applications and um, getting a better understanding of the meaning. So we are trying there over this data framework, data governance stream to engage business. And um, I think we are on a good way because uh, data and digital is also in the business strategy of, of LGT. So they acknowledge the, the importance of, of really managing and using data properly. Uh, Jeffrey has a, a lot of fairly detailed questions here, which I'm, I'm not sure we have time to get to. So I, I'm going to apologize to him for that. Um, a couple of quick questions, though. Uh, can you comment on what kinds of volumes, uh, be it customer account arrangements, uh, that, that will be handled through the knowledge graph? Um, 
point is currently is only the the um, lighthouse project is in um, production we are working on um, other projects which is expanding the the lighthouse project as well um, there we are talking about different volumes to be honest because this lighthouse project wasn't really about handling volume um, this will be a topic we will have to discuss and to address uh, in the further roadmap and, and use cases but it wasn't meant like really having to control over a lot of data it was more meant to really um, being able to manage the legal entity uh, data and metadata and so on so yeah, it's yeah. currently yeah. not not the main a topic small, yes. okay it's a, it's a use case that doesn't have high uh, volumes, but, uh, but yeah. just to say that doesn't mean that we can't handle high volumes. Actually, uh, at the previous uh, company that I worked for, uh, we were dealing with uh, like data sources that had two, one data source had 200 million records uh, that we need to do onboard, onboard uh, translating that to a billion triples. Uh, that's just one data set. Uh, so the, the the triple store technology that we use for un, let's say behind the behind the, the the service layer of EKG, there's there are triple stores. There could be as as many as you want, and not necessarily just triple stores. Could also be other types of databases. Uh, but those triple stores, like Stardog, for example, can handle uh, at least fifty billion tri uh, triples in one database. Um, so these these th that technology is actually expanding rapidly there's all kinds of other vendors out there other products um, and, and there's a lot of competition and and the the volumes and the performance is uh, getting better and better and better uh, okay i'm gonna have to wrap us up there oh, uh, sorry. i'm sorry I, I i um would love to get into some more detail with you but we are at our time sorry. Uh, so i want to thank uh ray and jacobus for a wonderful presentation um we'll be taking a short break now uh, in the meantime, we encourage you to network with the speakers and other attendees within the SpotMe app. Uh, I'd particularly suggest Rodney and Jeffrey, uh, whose questions were unanswered, uh, perhaps reach out to Jacobus directly to get answers to your questions there. Uh, we'll be back at the top of the hour, which is about uh, eight and a half minutes from now at 10 a.m. Pacific time, 1 p.m. Eastern. We look forward to seeing you then. Thanks very much again, everybody. Bye-bye. Thank you. Thank you, too.